Terus teranglah, terus teranglah pada aku katakanlah apa yang ada dalam hatimu. Terus teranglah in Malay word is being honest. So today a honest um, sharing about my journey. Ladies and gentlemen, people call me a crazy doctor. So this is my invincible journey. Yes, um, I'm a multi-hybrid artist, beauty queen and everything. But again that, I start from really, really humble beginning from you know being nicknamed as Godzilla into multi-hybrid artists and stuff. Malaysia, it's a really interesting country. We have diverse of nation, culture, everything we have. But again, because of this diversity, a lot of time you have to grab your own chance. I always have a dream for entertainment world. I started from chemical engineering, then progress into law, business, production, music, you name it, I, I go into it. So a lot of times in Malaysia, having so diverse nation, so diverse platform, you have to know where is your game. We are not like big countries. We are not like other countries. We are Malaysia where it's very unique by itself, but you must know your own formula and your own way as well. Back then, when I was being crowned Miss Little Malaysia and launched my album, can you guess that? How many people come for my press conference? Just two. And I remember I was just singing to two person. It was indeed a failure. But again, a failure better than not trying. So in chemical engineering, we say that better to have result than not trying. So again, I gain data, I gain like, you know, whether the press like my uh, singing or not and stuff. Okay, I get feedback. I mean, constructive feedback and everything. But again, never give up on your dream. In Malaysia, uh, a lot of people go into the science stream, a lot of other different stream. Back then, entertainment line in Malaysia is still quite backwards. So a lot of times, you need extra efforts rather than waiting for chances. So I volunteer into acting, I volunteer into cooking, I volunteer into every single thing. I just want to try and see what can I create. So never ever I mean, imagine that Cooking, Master Chef, brought me into the heart of Malaysia. I tried so many things, Miss World, PhD and everything, but cooking. So sometimes in the art world, why cooking, I ask myself, because it transcends through different languages, through different medium. Sometimes you have to rethink, re-strategize, structure. So when there's visibility, I started going to film, it's music again, it worked because you need audience. So lots of time. Back then, when I was being nicknamed as Godzilla, I keep complaining that why I like that. Don't give in your fate. If you're born like that, change it. Grab it, create it. Again, we in the entertainment line, you must know where are the audience. In Malaysian terms, we say that you cannot shock sendiri, meaning that you can't be arrogant. No matter how beautiful you are, how talented you are, but if there's no audience, we fail. In the popular music world, in the popular mass world, you are being judged in the rating system. So again, you must know the transition of the media as well. So back then, radio was created to transform all the listeners, all the users to listeners. Then TV came out, all listeners become watcher, audiovisual. This century, social media, Everyone is a social media creator. Each of us can be famous in our own territory. The term celebrity, the terms famous have been changed due to the change of media. So again, I'm from the music industry. Back then, you have to plead recording label to sign you. But again, 2000, social media changed everything. You must chase your own game. It doesn't mean that under record label is good or bad, depends on what model or what mode you want. So back then, nobody, no person who knows how to manage this beauty queen, you know, singer. So you have to be an entrepreneur. But again, being entrepreneur is not coming up, popping like mushroom. You must try, error, serve people, get the right education. Of course, I was stuck in the entertainment line. That's why I went for my PhD study. A lot of people ask me, did I do full-time and stuff? No, I did part-time. For me as well, I know paper is important, but not just the marks. So what I did was, 
I was doing everything. I was working full time, doing my PhD part time. Then I was traveling back forward Taiwan and stuff, doing my international album. Because I was stuck just by referring to journals or textbook. I wanted something different. My teacher challenged me why I took six years. He said, I wouldn't see if you take three years, it's just going to be theoretical. Why not challenge yourself? You are in the entertainment line. There's something for you to discover. I took her advice. I went the longer route. I went and get new data. I went and test. That's why I transformed my whole research into exploratory. I want to explore. I don't want to just buy the book by the theory. Back then in 2016, I was the first who write about social media strategy in, back in Malaysia. All my professors laughed at me. They said that mm, it wouldn't, it's nothing. Why not you do TV, radio? I said, no, I saw it in Taiwan, how, the, how Jay Chow or other artists make it through social media and new media digital. So I was like, I protected my idea. I went for it and I graduate. You know, PhD is, everyone calls it permanent hate damage, but again, it is for you to protect your own theory. You are creating something that's no longer like a master or a degree student. So after my PhD, everyone thought that I would stay back, Malaysia, you know, everything. Again, I took another big challenge in my life. I applied to my dream school, Berkeley, which is every musician dream, uh, dream school. So being in there, I thought, yay, I made it and stuff, Hollywood first music school. But again, when you went in, I saw the vast talent inside. First day in school, when everyone stand up and introduce themselves, they're no longer just talking about how good they are in the instrument. How many instruments can they pay? How many competitions have they won? How many degree master have they had? So, you know, a lot of Asian, we were like shocked because overseas, they are more advanced in arts. But again, I was a bit proud as well. So I won the fellowship, but again as well, it was a hurdle for me of letting go whatever I did in Malaysia and challenge myself in overseas. In overseas, everyone don't know you. You had to start from zero and I was stuck with one year old. Either come back or just break it there. I decided to take the challenge. Started down again as a crew and then studying 16 hours per day to win the fellowship. Each of us never sleep for eight months. Then when they announced top 15, um, I was the only one, I mean, two, one out of the two Asian who won the fellowship. But again, I strategized it nicely. I never go for per, uh, performance. I went for production because there is a role for diversity, minority, and they need a women. So from a performer, from a chemical engineering background, going to production, it was tiring. But because of all the science and art background, I was very fast in adapting into technological skill. So I asked, you know, there was like a lot of supervisor there. I asked one of like the Latin Grammy producer. They, he told me, when it's not about a paper, you know, it is the paper is a, it's just a token to go in. How many hours are you willing to sacrifice? Each of them, those who really did well, really slept in the studio, polishing everything for almost 10,000 hours. We calculated 10,000 hours, meaning how many? Eight hours per day you know, five days per week, five and a half years. So a lot of times we ask ourselves, are we ready? No. Have you key in the right hours? No. So don't give you an excuse. Just key in the 10,000 hours rule. You're going to reach somewhere. This is how I built my profile from, yes, my chemical <laughs> engineering background into a lot of vast background. The basic was for me, my foundation was science but I love arts too much. So that mentality, adding with art background, it makes me very unique. Step by step, step by step, I use this to conquer a lot of territories and also me, myself as a company. <laughs> I don't need to hire other people. So it's very cost lenient. You know, a lot of times when you let go of your ego, when you dare to come down and see possibilities, you got to see a lot of new things. Of course, you must know business. If you can't sell, Mm, you can't survive, you still need bread and butter. So a lot of times, no matter what you study, add on some business skill, you know, why hire people? Why not you do it yourself? Nobody's gonna know your baby more than you yourself. No matter how many experience they have, how much vast stuff they have, you know, I would say that go and learn it yourself. You don't need to always employ people. People are not gonna stay with you forever. 
Now as well, you have to know the professional languages, but you must have the best packages. From science background, I know that I must be professional, but from the business side, I must give the best price, best package, best unique selling point. A lot of all these things I learned beyond science stream. So again, we know that a lot of things, you must go to the growth zone, but it's always from the safe zone. Adding on the second phase, every one of us, I guarantee you that every time I conquer one mountain to one mountain, I will go to the fear zone. I have to be honest. There's nothing to show off. There's nothing to be scared as well. Add on with the learning zone. I always say that university, I'm not here to show off. I'm here to learn. Your mindset must be clear. We are not secondary school student. We are no longer primary school student. You are not just competing with your peers. These are all your contacts. These are all your connections. So a lot of times, I was like, why are we competing on the paper? You know, we should build alliances. <laughs> you know, my best contact is always from university or my pre-university. You get to see the extra talent before you're stepping out to the real world. The real world, everyone is wearing a mask. You can't see them. So a lot of times, get into a lot of challenges, add on with learning, you are going to grow beyond your imagination. During COVID as well, I was stuck for two years in Spain. A lot of things challenged me. A lot of things I went into interview and stuff. I let go everything. I just want to keep trying. Never ever imagined that I would gotten associate professor role in UITM. And again, that Agung appointed me as you know the producer for next year hall, which are they are launching. Being an associate professor as well, I saw various, various data, real data, and various different problems as well. We're solving stuff every day. So it's no longer by the book. You can't even find from a research paper. You're doing research almost every day. You think PhD is, is hard? I guess being a professor is even harder. You are solving so many other PhD projects. So one by one, when you put in all the pieces and everything directly towards it, don't go against the flow. Go with the flow. I was asking why, my, what, why life is challenging me so hard. It's to prep you to become someone to manage a bigger project. If you play safe, you're going to be eliminated. Of course, you must have your own strategy. We are all educated people nowadays. Information, everything online. There's so many things compared to 10 or 20 years ago. It's just that, are you sure that you're on the right place? Are you sure that you're being eliminated or reburied? So always ask yourself, is this what you want? But even you're not in the position where you, are, you like it, add on with something new. Back then, nobody protected my dream. That's why a lot of starter, a lot of entrepreneur, a lot of creator, we will suffer first. But the next generation, I hope that all these things will encourage everyone to go beyond your comfort zone, create better than us. Then only our duty are fulfilled. A lot of times, education is not to control. It's to educate and also to lead the younger generation into a higher, a better background and better for our country as well. Bit by bit, this is my journey. I hope that, you know, be more crazy than me so you can be better than this Godzilla, better than this Miss World Malaysia. Don't just stuck on the surface. True diamonds are beneath and the fake glamour are on the surface. Think deep, keep working hard, you will get there. Thank you so much.